Hello, I'm Ken Varnum. Uh, I had the pleasure of editing Lorcan Dempsey's book, The Network Reshapes the Library. And we're here today to have a few questions and answers uh, about the book and the blog that it was based on. Hello, Lorcan. Hello, Ken. First question, just to get us started. Why a book of the blog when the trend seems much more towards a blog in support of a book? The main reason is, uh, you know, as you know, I was writing blog entries over a long period, over, um, you know, a, a 11, 12 years. And during that time, the topics and themes accumulated. So what I found, you know, as the blog got going, um, I'd come back to particular themes, I'd come back to particular topics. And, uh, you know, some of those, you know, we gave a name to, and that name got some currency, things like, you know, discovery happens elsewhere, or um, collective collection, uh, in the flow. And uh, what I found was that as my sort of thinking evolved about those things, or as a body of work accumulated, it would be nice to actually show that accumulated body of work in, in one place rather than having it as a, as a series of uh, blog entries that might be individually referenced but didn't sort of accumulate into, into that um, uh, organic mass, you know, because on the web you find an entry, you don't see the whole lot together. So uh, I think that was quite important that the longer it went on and as so some of the themes or topics were discussed or taken up more generally, I thought it would be nice to uh, fix them, to fix that cum accumulation in the literature, in a book. Um, and uh, that's what we did. So I wonder if you could uh, tell me a bit about what got you started blogging, and even more interestingly, what was it that kept you going for this past 11 or 12 years? Well, I actually began the blog uh, as an internal blog here, here at OCLC for my uh, OCLC colleagues. And, the main reason for doing that was a, a communication device, uh, sort of trying to say, here are interesting things in the environment that you should be alert to, that you should be aware of. Uh, here are people or projects or uh, services that, that really should be thinking about. Once I began doing it, though, I really found it uh, very, very compelling. It was sort of liberating, uh, in a way. Uh, you could write an entry very quickly. Um, normally, I'm quite a slow writer because, you know, I worry about the structure and then once I begin, I, you know, I, I get too long and it's a bit ponderous. But um, writing, the, writing the blog I found very liberating. You could write an entry, you could begin it, you could write it quickly, you could finish it, you didn't have to worry about an outline or anything like that. So uh, I found it quite liberating and uh, after a while we said, well, if, you know, if I'm putting this effort into it, we should really um, externalize it. Once it was externalized, then I think, um, um, you know, what I called maybe um, writerly uh, pleasures in the, in, in the book, um, uh, uh, it really was uh, enjoyable, certainly for, the first few, certainly for the first few years that you could craft a short communication, you could say something quickly, you could release it. And at that time, as you remember, uh, there was a lot of um, blog, uh, blog writing. I think we've sort of seen peak blog activity maybe now. We might talk about that later. The main thing I found, though, was that once the blog became um, a little bit more widely known, uh, when I was going out to events or when we had visitors, um, uh, people would uh, pick up uh, on particular entries. They'd ask me about them. They'd mention them. And, and uh, I, I found that very... Um, uh, very good. It, it sort of established a connection, and uh, you know, I enjoyed then you know following up or talking to people about those particular entries. And to be honest, that's one of the things that I miss now that you know my blog writing has certainly slowed down. I mean, I'm doing one every six months or every year uh, at the at the moment. So that's that's certainly something I miss. You have written extensively about a wide range of topics over these uh, this decade or so. I wonder if you could summarize the book's theme, or maybe a couple of themes, uh, to, to pull out of the whole collected work. I actually think that the title we ended up with is um, uh, quite a good um, uh, summary of, of, of what that cumulative uh, work is, uh, is about. Um, what I found um, as time progresses, and I suppose as I get um, older, that I tend to think less about technology as such, or systems, and more about the, the framework or the organizational uh, arrangements in which uh, libraries uh, uh, decide to do things, think about how research and learning are changing and how that uh, affects libraries. 
And I think network is quite a nice word because it has both that technology sense, but it also has that sense of communication, of people working together, of systems, of interaction. Um, and I think that um, increasingly, you know, uh, how research and learning gets done, how we respond to that, happens in this environment that's mediated by the network. And that changes individual systems, it changes um, uh, the work that libraries do, but it also changes the way research gets done, the way learning gets done, which in turn means that we have to respond in, in particular ways. So I think the, the idea that libraries are increasingly working in a network environment that's sort of technology mediated, uh, but more importantly this means they have to do things in, in different ways. That, that's, the, that's the core of uh, what's in the book. Um, and I think maybe there are two, two themes come out of that. One is how do we engage with uh, research and learning workflows that are network mediated, that are digitally mediated, big issue for libraries moving forward. And the other one is uh, how do libraries begin to coordinate at scale their activities as the network encourages people to do things together. So HashiTrust uh, in your own uh, home institution is a good example. Uh, of that? How do libraries coordinate at scale to get their work done? I wonder if you could uh, pick out one or two posts over the years that might you'd call your favorites, and, and what about them uh, has made them stick with you? I suppose the, if I think about favorite categories, there are two, um, two classes of entry. One is maybe sort of general trends or general network trends applied to libraries. So. Uh, you know, I've written about social objects, how um, uh, books or images or other things um, are uh, uh, venues around which social activity happens, and, uh, and uh, uh, I think that's quite important. Um, the whole Web 2.0 thing when it came, sort of thinking about what that actually meant in terms of libraries, uh, I think was quite interesting, and I think we, I think we sort of missed the the, the big significance of that, which um, um, you know, we may talk about, we may talk about uh, a little bit later. The other thing, uh, the other area that uh, I did like, and um, this uh, was especially the case as the blog went on, and uh, you know, as I say, it was nice having this venue where you could uh, alert people to things. But I suppose the more um, cultural or literary, or in some cases, you know, things with a particular Irish. Uh, uh, interest, uh, I found myself having to resist doing more of those because they weren't necessarily central to the, to the readership. So writing about um, cultural tourism or uh, a variety of other things. I remember one entry I did about uh, Pan Am bags, um, you know, Pan American uh, travel bags and how, how the sort of old travel uh, luggage was becoming popular because it, uh, it evoked a time when uh, uh, travel uh, was actually a pleasure, uh, whereas people now rushing through the airport, um, um, you know, hurrying, harassed, uh, uh, tired, you know, this uh, evoked uh, an earlier time when travel had some luxury about it. So those types of things I found myself having to resist doing more entries about that type of thing. With, with this opportunity you had to review the entire blog and all of its content, I wonder if you were struck by any posts that might have stood the test of time particularly well. I think this goes back to what I was saying, uh, what I was saying a moment ago. Um, in, in reviewing all those entries, and it was a bit shocking to see quite how many there were, um, the, I, I think the sort of general discussion about Web 2.0 sort of struck me or, or, or stood out for me. I think. When uh, the library community, when we began looking at that area first, we emphasized sort of mashups, blogs, uh, RSS, um, the, the leveling, opening uh, effect of the network, and that's very real. Um, but that's one trend. The other trend, I think, which was also in Web 2.0, and certainly was there if you looked at you know, Tim O'Reilly's original writing, was the, the sort of concentration effect, the um, impact of the power laws. Um, that we've become um, so familiar with now. So, you know, the network favors scale, uh, the rich get richer, we've seen the emergence of Apple, Google, eBay, Wikipedia, these big gravitational hubs on the network. And I think the implications of those are very important for libraries also. So the, 
the sort of concentration on the one hand and the diffusion on the other, the concentration of uh, processing power, capacity, and the diffusion of communication and so on. That, that um, uh, dual impact, I think, was something maybe that we, um, um, we should have spent a little bit more thinking about. And uh, obviously, it's still very real in uh, the way we uh, think about um, our services and uh, build them. But I think uh, trying to uh, emphasize that um, concentration on the one hand and diffusion on the other was something that um, um, the more I look at it, the more real that, that has become, I think. Um, so I thought, I thought it was good to emphasize that early. You mentioned a bit ago uh, how your blog has, uh, or blogging perhaps, has, is, is on the wane a bit. I wonder if you could contrast your style of writing more essay-like posts uh, works with the new, the kind of the current wave of microblogging on Facebook or on Twitter. How do you see blogging evolving in the, in the near term? You know, as I said a moment ago, I, I found the, the act of blogging, the writing, you know, the, that length of uh, entry actually quite liberating because e even though you say essay-like, it's very much shorter than an essay. So it's something that you could tackle, um, you know, maybe not in an afternoon, but in, but in a weekend or over the spread of, of a couple of days. And you could just leave it sitting there and, and go back to it. Then also you could revisit it, you know, a few months later or even a few a few years later. So you know, again, it had that sort of cumulative um, effect. Um, so I found that you know, I found that very liberating. Um, if you think about what has happened, you're right. I think, as I said, we've seen the sort of peak blog activity, maybe. But what's happened is, you know, media outlets, uh, newspapers, magazines, others have incorporated. Uh, blogging uh, activity into what they do. So you, you, you do have this um, um, flow of uh, material coming out. It seems to me that um, Twitter, Facebook are, 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 are quite different in various ways. I mean, although, for example, I'm quite active on Twitter, I tend to use it much more for linking than for thinking. So I, I do um, uh, tweet a lot of links to things. But it doesn't really give you the opportunity to, um, to um, uh, share uh, some thinking about you know, what, what's going on or what's happening. F Facebook tend to use in a more um, personal or random, random way. Um, what I do think is interesting, going back to what I said about the um, liberation, but also your comment about maybe um, essay style, I think the emergence of medium um, and um, some slightly long for, for, form uh, blogging again has been has been uh, quite interesting. Um, I do think there's a place for that reflective um, blog entry, and um, you can see um, you know quite a lot of people still doing that, mostly mostly as a, uh, an accompaniment to um, some work or other uh, activity. So. I think um, even though we've seen a, a drift back into various media outlets, we've seen the emergence, as you say, of, of Twitter and so on, I do think we can still see a place for that sort of reflective, um, slightly longer form uh, blog uh, activity. And you know, there's some good examples of that. I, I quite like John Hagel, for example, and John Seeley Brown, their, their work, which quite often appears first in sort of longish blog entries. Given that, I wonder if you could give us a hint about the topics that you're you're thinking that would make good blog posts in the, the months, and I hope hope not months, maybe weeks <laughs> to come. What are you working on now? Well, I do I do actually have a, a blog entry underway uh, at the moment um, about research information management, about how uh, you know you're seeing a new class of systems emerge to help manage research information within campuses, research about the uh, uh, information about the research admin process, and then that. Um, leads out into things like profiling, uh, expertise, sharing that type of thing. And the, the reason I'm writing about that is these are, these are, uh, they haven't become widely adopted maybe in a U.S. context, although they're they're now quite common in the European context. And I was interested in that contrast. More generally, uh, you know, it does seem to me that we have all of these big shifts underway. I mean, if you think about education itself, structure of education, research and learning behaviors. 
So that from a library point of view, there are all sorts of uh, very big questions underway at the moment. And in more article-based stuff, I have been writing about moving from collections to um, how universities will have to begin to support more directly um, creation activity, um, how libraries will begin to support people more directly in their, in their workflows, or, you know, as we discussed, developing newer collaborative structures within which to get work done. So there's no shortage of uh, materials, so there's no shortage of uh, topics that you might want to cover. Uh, what I will have to do is to find some um, time to, uh, to actually write some. Well, I think we all look forward to, to seeing what you write next in the blog. Uh, thank you very much for spending a bit of time today answering some questions, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you, as I say, for uh, having turned a, a mountain of text into a book. Thank you.